And that there has been a plane crash on the uh, southern tip of Manhattan. You're looking at the uh, World Trade Center. We understand that a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. We don't know anything more than that. We don't know if it was a commercial aircraft. We don't know if it was a private aircraft. We have no idea how many were on board or what is th what the extent of the injuries are right now. We are. Uh, we have. I understand an eyewitness on the phone right now, sir. Sir, good morning. It was an impact. So you have no idea right oh, now? Oh, there's another one. Another plane just hit. <gasps> right? oh. oh, my God. Oh. Another plane has just hit. It hit another building. Oh. Flew right into the middle of it. <gasps> Explosion. Oh my God. It's right in the middle of the building. This one into the East Tower. Yes. Yes. Right in the middle of the building. And right now, that, yes, that was definitely looked like it was on purpose. You saw a yes, plane? Yes, I just saw a plane go into the building. Why do you say that was definitely on purpose? It, because it just it just flew straight into it. It looks like it's about, uh, I would say, 15 floors lower than the first building, and there's now flames coming out of that building as well. They're both completely on fire. Now, Teresa, hang on with us one second. We're going uh, to re-rack the tape of when we were talking to you to see if we can tell... Okay. Um, we can't see anything. We can't see a second plane in the picture. There we see the explosion. It would appear that there has been another major explosion, this one in the nation's capital. You are looking at a scene of uh, apparent blast aftermath. There is smoke in the air over the Pentagon. We don't know whether this is the result of a bomb or whether it is yet another aircraft that has targeted a um, symbol of the United States power, but there is smoke pouring out of the Pentagon. Um, this is coming at 9.43 Eastern Time. The president right now is on his way back from Florida. He had gone there for an educational event. In a brief remarks, he said this was an apparent terrorist attack on our country. We do have a couple of reports, one from AP, one from Reuters, reporting that an American Airlines plane was hijacked, that a United Airlines plane was hijacked, supposedly one of those two planes hijacked out of Boston. At this point, the Pentagon, the White House, the Capitol, and the Treasury have been evacuated in uh, Washington. In New York, all airports, tunnels, and bridges have been closed, and in Chicago, the uh, Sears Tower has been evacuated. We understand now there has been a secondary explosion on Tower 2. With that, we will leave you and turn it over to Dan Rather. Very low, and everyone said, wow, that plane is very, very low. Come on, guys, keep moving. I was walking to work, and all of a sudden, I see a jet crash into the first tower. An American Airlines flight loaded with 92 people crashes head-on into the North Tower of the World Trade Center. And then we heard the crash. We ran to the window. Into the building. It went into the Trade yeah, Center. It the Trade Center. We, we saw all the shrapnel fall, and then we said, get out. And minutes later. Right oh, now. there's another one. Another plane just hit. <gasps> right. oh. oh, my God. Oh. Another plane has just hit. I heard a roar, and I looked around thinking that it had to be a helicopter, and I looked up, and I saw the second plane hit. A second commercial plane, a United Airlines jet, also hijacked, carrying 65 people, plows into the South Tower. First one we thought was an accident. When we heard there was a second one, we definitely thought it was terrorism. On the ground, witnesses could not believe their eyes. Oh, 70 stories up with the building burning. Reason gave way to desperation. New York's bravest never had a chance. We really never even got to uh, cl close that close to the building. The explosion blew and it, it knocked everybody over. Less than an hour later, the South Tower came crumbling down. It collapsed. The top floors collapsed down. I saw it blow, blow and then ran like hell. Thank God. I'm 69, but I can still run. <laughs> but it was far from over. Now, Tower 2 collapsed into Tower 1. Within minutes after that, we were ordered out. When the dust settled, signs of life started to emerge. Chaos. It's just chaos out here. It really is. So the Twin Towers fall. It's amazing. It's crazy. I can't believe this shit is happening. I really can't. It's nightmares. I'm getting right here. This was the worst act of terrorism on U.S. soil, but not the first attack on the World Trade Center. Eight years ago, terrorists set off bombs in the basement in an effort to take down the two towers. They failed. Today, mission accomplished.
I tell you what, it's a, a sad day for America, it really is. By 2 o'clock this afternoon, firefighters and police officers and paramedics by the hundreds stood by, many of them feeling helpless. There was nothing they could do at this point because the building was still unsecure. Our main priority is to get in, do a search and rescue, look for survivors, and then clean up uh, what's left. Uh, and we can't do that until the building is deemed safe. Ankle deep in debris and despair, rescue workers waited. Some had relatives of their own inside. One police officer told me her sister worked here on the 40th floor, due in at 9 a.m. She was always early, she said, always. A sign on a paramedic's van spoke volumes. We're gonna do the best that we can to get people out of there, get into the hospital, get back in line, go back out there and do it again. New York Port Authority Police Chief William Hall choked back tears. For him, this was no longer just work. On a personal level, because I know that these are all your men and it's, it's a business, but I'm sure that a lot of these guys are your friends. How are you helping them? It's not a business now, it's personal now. Sir? It's personal now. We have to get them. Presidential aspirants and members of Congress. At the insistence of the White House, implicit message, the whole of America in some growing security concerns. Air Force One now shadowed everywhere by fighter jets. Information about the president's movements now tightly guarded. The commander in chief, very much on active duty. Every day, one step further down the road to war. But fierce when stirred to anger. This conflict was begun on the timing and terms of others. It will end in a way and at an hour of our choosing. Later in the day, an important symbol as the president defied the threat to national security to visit ground zero. America today is on bended knee in prayer for the people whose lives were lost here, for the workers who work here, for the families who mourn. The symbols of U.S. dominance in ruins around him, thousands dead beneath the rubble, Mr. Bush rallied exhausted rescue workers, pledging those responsible will pay a heavy price. I can hear you, the rest of the world hears you, and the people... We'll hear all of us soon. The defiant words hit home with firefighters who have spent frustrating days searching the wreckage amid dimming hopes that any of their comrades will be found alive. Uptown from the epicenter, the president toured the makeshift FEMA headquarters and spent time with families of New York police officers missing in the crumpled buildings. Away from the view of cameras, Mr. Bush met with the mother of one officer whose body was recovered on Tuesday. She gave the president his badge. Speaking to the White House press corps, President Bush said of the destruction in New York, you have to see it to understand the full impact. I said that this was the first uh, act of war on America in the 21st century. And uh, uh, I was right, particularly having seen the scene.